Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Eurovision interview. Today, I am here with a band that is quite literally out of this world. I am here with Subwoofer from Norway. How are y'all doing today? Absolutely amazing today. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Well, and and for uh, both you, Jim and Keith, I'm sure that this Eurovision experience has a little been a little weird, uh, possibly maybe a little bit stressful for you all. How are you kind of handling the the Eurovision experience, the rehearsal process, and everything like that? Well, you know, we're just trying our best to cope with everything. Uh, it's been interesting to be on the big stage. It's almost as big as the main stage on the moon. So we like that. And uh, you Earthlings have so many cool lights. We really like that. <laughs> yeah, well, and speaking of lights, uh, Keith, I know for you in Madrid, we had a little bit of an issue where uh, you almost got blinded uh, by one of the lights. Oh, was that? Oh, I see. Sorry, that was Jim. My apologies. Jim, you almost got blinded by one of the lights. Have we avoided any issues on the stage for Turin? Yeah, we make sure that uh, our sunglasses uh, are much uh, like more in place now. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'm sure that our, our lights are more bright than what you're accustomed to on the moon. So, <laughs> well, and, and speaking of, of the moon, uh, so I know that you all essentially came together while you were on the moon, became one of the biggest bands in the galaxy. How did you two first meet and decide to make music together? You know, we just appeared four and a half billion years ago, like with the universe when it started to evolve and they evolved naturally. Okay. All right. And then, you decide to come to Norway uh, to compete in the Norwegian National Final Melody Grand Prix. What made you decide that Norway could be the host of your song for Eurovision? There are so many great things going on in Norway and we really liked it there. Uh, you know, we've been ho hovering over the Europe for uh, a few decades, and we decided that Norway would definitely be the place to be. Gotcha. Well, I have to agree. I do have a soft spot for Norway as well. So I think that you made a pretty good, pretty good pick there. Mm -hmm. And I did also notice, um, you know, we got your rehearsal clip uh, yesterday on TikTok, um, and I saw that you brought your spaceship uh, with you to Turin. How difficult was it to not only get that to Turin, but then also to get it into the arena for rehearsals? Well, the Earthlings are really you know, great here. They uh, cooperate with us and they opened the ground gate so we could like just easily slide the spaceship in. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right. And, and you also stated, um, I don't remember at what point, I think this might have been in your Eurovision biography, uh, that you said that your song is the greatest song in existence. Why do you think that your song is the best? What makes it the greatest? It's great rhythms and they're great lyrics with huge depths. So, uh, you know, and uh, who can't, who will resist the song that's about saving Grandmas? That is true. That is true. And, and speaking of Grandma, how is Grandma doing? Does she have a lot of bananas to protect herself? Well, we have to eat Grandma. Oh, well, that is unfortunate. Maybe, maybe not enough bananas. Uh... <laughs> Fortunately, there are a lot of Grandmas on Earth still. That is true. That is one thing about Earth. We do have a lot of grandmas. Um, and I think as well, you never know at Eurovision, there happen to be quite a few grandmas as well. So maybe, maybe you'll run into one. Hopefully she'll have some bananas for you, though, just, you know, to be cautious, to be safe. We hope so, too. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, I know that I, I, I usually ask this of our Eurovision artists, and I know that obviously, as we just covered, your song is super meaningful and super special to you. But 
If you had to pick another song from the Eurovision 22 catalog to sing in turn instead, what song do you think that you would perform and why? I think that will be uh, Space Mom with uh, Songwriter. Gotcha. I had a feeling that maybe with the chair, that's the direction that you were going to go. I got you. Perfect, perfect. Alrighty. Well, and then I think that also some of our, our Eurovision fans, of course, people have been following you all since Melody Grand Prix and during the pre-parties. Um, but a lot of our Eurovision viewers are probably going to watch Eurovision and your performance and, and hear your song for the first time during the semifinals. So what are you hoping that your song will communicate to the general Eurovision audience? Absolutely nothing. I think I might improve. No, this might be wrong. Very little. It's going to be slow, boring. We might be off here. Oh, this is better. Okay, so we hope that you are really ready for a party. We're really looking forward to uh, dance on the stage and we hope everybody will uh, uh, follow us on TikTok and do the dance. Yes, that is right. Yes, the dance, the dance. Well, and speaking of TikTok as well, I mean, you all have become practically viral. Um, and I think that that started all the way back when y'all kind of debuted in Melody Grand Prix. Did you think that your song, I mean, I, obviously we know that we have the greatest song in existence, but did you think that Earthlings would possibly respond in such a positive way to this song? Well, we try to make the song so it fits uh, the human ear. So, uh, you know, in uh, some other planets, we can't use bass and drums because that will scare off uh, the listeners. But uh, here on Earth, uh, bass and drums are really what makes you people move. So we try to add a lot of the, that in our song. And uh, well, uh, we find it really catchy ourselves. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, in, in specifically thinking about beyond just our, our Eurovision song here, are there plans after Eurovision to continue to release music? Or are you going to go back to the, mu to the moon and just kind of continue to push your music across the galaxy? We really like it here on Earth, and we hope that we can be here for a couple of million years. Perfect. Well, I'm sure that we would love to have you. Based off of the Eurovision fan community's uh, response to you all, I think that they would love some additional music from you as well. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, I have one final question for you all, and I think that it's one of the hardest and most important questions of the year. Who is going to possibly receive your 12 points this year at Eurovision? Well, there are multiple uh, answers to that, but uh, we think that uh, since uh, Sam Ryder is uh, talking about space, he might be onto something there. And uh, I'm re receiving very mixed signals here now. <laughs> Both are talking at the same time, you know, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we can go with sam Ryder. that we can go with that one as our answer the other two will remain a mystery until the votes are cast uh on the final night how about that one <laughs> perfect perfect all righty well i want to thank you all for your time today um, i am so excited to see you all hit the stage in the semifinals and see that performance that you have put together for us um, as a reminder to everyone who is watching this interview make sure that you like subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell so you get our next interview for the eurovision series Ooh, ooh, one last thing oh and also make sure that you follow uh subwoofer uh where can they find you all you can find Subwoofer on all platforms. Just search for Subwoofer. Okay. Type perfect, it in. perfect. 
All righty. Well, I hope that you all have a wonderful experience there in Turin. Um, I hope that you all get home safely and your spaceship uh, makes it back to Norway as well. Um, and we cannot wait, like I said, I cannot wait to see you on that semifinal stage to see what you all pull off. All right. We're looking forward to see you too. Take care. Bye, everyone.